Good morning everyone. I'm Amy from Amy's Acrylic Artistry. Welcome to my channel. Thank you so very much for being here today. I'm so tired, but I really want to try this resin bowl vase from Mixed Media Girl. This is actually my second attempt. Uh, my first attempt, my bowl folded in on itself. I managed to save the bottom part of it, which was good. So I have a little mini bowl, which works perfect because I'll use it as a little jewelry dish in my bathroom. Um, but yeah, I want to try this again. I, I did not put out the very first video that I made because it was a disaster, but that's how you learn. There's no such thing as failing. It's a, it's a learning experience. So I definitely learned a lot from my first attempt. So the first part went absolutely perfect. It was the molding of the bowl part that didn't go so great. So we are going to try again today. Yeah. So let's get mixing up some resin. Okay, so I am going to walk you through all of the steps of this project. So first off, you need to clean your vase with alcohol, rubbing alcohol. It can be the 70% or the 90%, the 91%. Um, that one right there is a 99% that I was able to get at Walmart here in Canada. But like I said, the 70% is fine. You wanna get it on your cup. You wanna make sure that it's level. So have a level so that you can check it like I am here. You're gonna set it off to the side. In order to do this project, you need 12 ounces of resin um, and the Mixed Media Girl resin as well as the Art resin um, are both one-to-one -one ratios and you need 12 ounces. Um, so six of each. Um, I learned from Mixed Media Girl that if you put part B in first and then part A, um, it's because of the thickness the resin is actually thicker than the hardener is so pour the resin into the thickener and make sure you mix it for at least three minutes uh, scraping your sides as well as the bottom as well as your stick and mix 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 for at least three minutes so here i've separated out my colors i want white to be the predominant color because it's um, opaque, this dye is, um, is opaque and will help those other colors come through. So yeah, and as you can see, my first attempt, those are the colors that I used, but if you let the, if you let the resin harden, you can then um, reuse those cups. So here's the white, so those are just some big air bubbles that are in there, so we'll get those out after. But today I'm doing Grenache from TLP. It's a beautiful red pigment I've used previously that I absolutely love. I was having a hard time choosing the colors that I was going to use this time around. Um, James's mom really likes red, purple, and silver together. And even though James and I aren't together anymore, we are still very good friends and um, I really love his mom. She's fabulous. So those are the colors we're doing today, red, purple, and silver. And look how shimmery that Grenache is love it love 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 so this is the purple dye from Illumilite and the white was also uh, a dye from Illumilite and I'm going to add in the um, oh my goodness diamond dust <laughs> I was gonna say stardust close enough diamond dust so the dye along with the diamond dust brings out this really really pretty shimmer and I'll show you once I get the mix together, you really can't see it um, on camera, um, but the sparkle is absolutely amazing. And um, once it dried, really, really super pretty. Love this very much. So there you might be able to see a little bit of sparkle there, but I know it's, was very, it's very hard on camera to see that, but trust me, it's very, very sparkly. And then this is the silver pigment that I'm going to use from Polycolor. The Diamond Dust was also from Polycolor. And um, all of these, except for the TLP, of course, um, are available on Mixed Media Girl's website. You can go and check it out. Or if you have the Shop app, um, she has them all listed there as well. I really like the Shop app because everything is converted to Canadian dollars. So if you live in a different country besides the US, uh, they'll convert it into your dollars. So there's that silver. I love the shimmer in this. 
Okay, so now it's time to grab your vase and center it in your mold or on your mold. And then I'm going to put a layer of the clear resin that I had a little bit left over of. This just helps to get a layer down. Um, I'll just run my finger around, make sure that I get underneath that um, initial lip, or I don't want, I guess it's not a lip, the end, the edge would be the lip. You don't want to get it on the lip. And um, with these round vases, just to get it in that little crevice to make sure that there's a nice coating. And then I wanted to start with the white to get a bit of an opaque base down um, before I put my colors on and I let that run just a little bit. And then I added in my purple. And again, I'm gonna let that run down just a little bit. These first couple of layers are not for the vase, but for the mold. So I know it looks like I'm putting down some really thick layers and not really doing anything with the vase, but I wanted to get down the colors first into the mold because everything's gonna run off the vase. So like I said, the first few layers are for the mold, not the vase. Although it does help to get that white coating on there to get that opaque base for, uh, for later. One thing I would recommend if you're going to use these, um, these dyes, that purple, I probably could have put in half the amount when it dries. Um, it's super dark. I would have liked it just a little bit lighter, but it's still very, very pretty on the vase. All right, a couple more layers here of my colors. Look at that red. Oh, it's so gorgeous. It's like a ruby color. It just shimmers. So now I'm working on my vase. These layers will run off and will create a really pretty pattern, um, but they will also stay and um, allow for some lines on the vase. I'm just going to continue alternating between the white, the purple, and the red. Uh, this is in real time, just so that you can kind of get an idea of how fast I'm going. Um, actually, the white was, that first white um, was in real time. This is uh, two times as fast. So it's close, but you get the idea. wanted to add in a little bit more white just to help with the opacity as well as um, I was worried that the red would disappear um, on top of that purple which in the end it does I still am really really happy with um, the final result but of course you always get kind of an idea in your head and after watching mixed media girl do her vases and I know she's been doing them for a long time and I'm just a beginner with this I had a perfect picture in my head of how the vase was going to end up. And of course it didn't end up looking like that, but it's still very, very pretty. And the initial picture I had in my head was more separation of color with purple being the predominant color, but because of the purple was so dark, it really took over and I probably should have added in a little bit more white at the end. I didn't want a lot of white, so that was also in my head. At this point um, is where I have stopped putting my lines on the vase. If it could dry exactly how it is right there, right now, it would be perfect. But that's not the case because of course the resin keeps running and because I put purple on last, it basically really took over. Um, but it is what it is and I, it is still very pretty. I know I'm repeating myself, but yeah, I really, really love how I, the final result ends up. So I took the remainder of my resin and did like a dirty cup and I'm doing like a dirty pour around the edges, which you can totally do. Uh, Mixed Media Girl recommends that if you find that your vase is where you want it, you don't have to keep adding layers to the vase. You can pour right into, um, into the mold. So I let it drip there for about five minutes. I didn't show that because that's a little bit boring. Um, just to have the drips slow down so that most of that resin does go into the mold. And then I move my vase off to the side. Um, the vase, don't worry about touching the bottom edge because it will continue to run and will cover up anything that you touch. And of course, that's a very fast time lapse for that hole to come in. I gave it a little spritz of the 99% alcohol 
and here is the unmolding. So just to clarify, you need to use 91% or higher if you're going to use it to pop any bubbles in your resin, but to clean your vases at the beginning, you can use 70%. So I just wanted to clarify that. So this one came out so easily and because I messed up the first one and it collapsed in on itself, I was really, really careful about how I handled this. So this is the side with the flower petals on the on the mold and then that's the part that we saw initially so I was really careful and if you just take your time with this and I have little hands and it definitely makes it much harder with smaller hands um, I could definitely use four hands for this technique um, I have done four bowls total now this being the very first so if you are enjoying what you're watching, I would love if you would subscribe to my channel. Make sure that you hit the notification bell. I have some really pretty pieces coming up. This morning I did one with acrylic paint as my color and man is it pretty. Oh, I also did another one where I took my pigment and painted out those um, flower petals in the bottom of the mold and then poured my resin on top. Um, I also uh, did a clear coat over the black and white uh, vase that I had painted a while back and put alcohol inks in the bottom of the mold and then as the clear resin ro rolled, <laughs> flowed off of that, um, it picked up the pigments in the bottom of the mold. So here you can see it does stick together. Um, I left this for six and a half hours. I have found is a perfect temperature for me here. It depends on where you live. It depends on the temperature of the room. Um, I am about an hour southwest of uh, Toronto. So, and it's February, March was when I did this, February. It was still cold, but I have a heater up in my art studio, which is on the fourth floor of my townhouse. So of course in the winter it's colder and in the summer it's hotter. Um, I have an air conditioner up here too, so I can pretty much keep my uh, room at the same temperature all year round, despite it being the very top floor. So as you can see, I'm pressing down, I'm molding the sides, I'm watching all of the petals to make sure that they're not collapsing in on themselves. I'm pulling them apart if they do. Um, it's, it's very pliable, which is really cool, but again, if they stick, um, you've got to be on top of it right away. And I'm just playing around, pulling it off the side of the bowl, and... Um, just, you know, I just keep going until it's how I like. Um, so like I said, I've got a few more bowls coming up. I do, this one worked out perfect. Um, I do have one where I ended up pouring too much resin on one side of the mold and a whole lot less on the other side of the mold. Um, it, my table is level um, and it, it didn't completely level out because of the way that I poured my resin. Um, I poured way too heavy on one side and so it didn't work out so great. But again, it was a learning experience. So I would love if you would subscribe to my channel. Uh, make sure you hit that notification bell so you see any future videos. Um, I do shorts as well um, and I love to paint. So um, acrylic pouring is how I got into this. If you haven't seen any of my other videos, I would love if you would check out my channel. Um, yeah. Oh my goodness, it just started to rain here really, really hard. I don't know if you can hear it in the background. But like I said, I'm up on the fourth floor and um, the wind is really strong too. I, I, you probably can't hear it, but if you can, that's the weird sound in the background. So here I'm just pushing into the very bottom ridge of the bowl where the flat part meets the part that starts to go up just so I can get a good shape. I put, um, so this little piece of uh, silicone mat comes in the kit that Mixed Media Girl puts together. I put a big heavy bottle into the bottom and I will let it sit for 24 hours until it's finished. And here we are, time to pop it out of the bowl. So like I, that was the bottle, I just wanted to show that I had already taken the bottle out as well as the silicone mat. I'm literally just 
popping it off the sides, detaching it from the sides. And there we go, it's all finished. I love how this piece turned out. Super shimmery, sparkly from that red Grenache from TLP, as well as the diamond dust in that purple. It is very dark though, as you can see. And wait till you see the vase, it's very dark too, but um, it's still very, very sparkly. Yeah, I'm very happy with that piece. So here's the vase. So you can see the purple definitely took over, but I got some really great red and silver lines in there. And I love the drips. The drips on the, on the top now are really, really cool. And I'm definitely gonna leave those on there. There's a little peek at the inside. But yeah, the, the um, dye is definitely very dark. So I would, I learned just to use a little bit less. So thanks again for watching. Have a great day and a great week. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.